Welcome to Your Legislators, a production of KRWG Broadcasting. Your Legislators is a public service program providing our viewing and listening audiences in Southern New Mexico the opportunity to hear about important legislative issues directly from their elected representatives in Santa Fe. Now here is your host, Carlos Correa. I'm Carlos Correa. Welcome to Your Legislators, also broadcast on KRWG 90.7 FM Las Cruces. My guest today represents District 37 in the New Mexico Senate, which includes neighborhoods in Las Cruces, the East Mesa, and the Elephant Butte area of Sierra County. An advocate for energy efficiency, renewable energy, and lower fuel costs, Democrat Senator Stephen Fishman. Welcome to the show, Senator. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. My first question to you is, many people had the opportunity to get to know you while on the campaign. Uh, first, tell us a little bit about why you decided to run for the District 37 seat. Well, this was a couple years back, 2008, that I ran. And uh, actually, a lot of folks had basically just asked me to run. Uh, I hadn't really ever thought about it, never been in political office. Um, and I was reluctant. Uh, but I'm glad I did. Uh, you know, I think my focus is, is just trying to take care of everybody, keep all the interests on the table, and uh, uh, give everybody a chance to pursue their own piece of the American dream. Now, this past election, we saw um, a lot of ballots leaning towards the Republican side. Did you ever feel uh, going into this election that it would be impossible to win? Well, um, uh, again, for, I didn't run in 2010. 2008, it was it was a difficult election, uh, but I quite honestly rode the Obama wave. Mm -hmm. uh, if I had run this time, uh, quite frankly, there's a good chance I would have lost because it was uh, the wave going towards the Republican side. Um, uh, that said, uh, uh, you know, we've got some new folks to work with, and my attitude always is, what are the issues that we, we have common ground on? Mm -hmm. And wherever we disagree, we'll, we'll disagree, but wherever we can find agreement, for God's sakes, Let's do the people's business for, uh, let's take care of them. A, a lot of people may be wondering, as far as, uh, as a lawmaker, how do you prepare uh, to go into uh, Santa Fe and into the legislative session? What's the process like? <laughs> you know, it's not, uh, I don't find myself preparing specifically for the session that much. I mean, I, you know, I put together some, some legislation that I've prepared ahead of time and, you know, obviously done the basic research, but I, I kind of view that as a continuous process. It's always happening. Um, now, in the last couple of weeks, uh, maybe months, um, you and other legislators have been visiting communities and uh, collecting data, gathering information. Uh, tell me a little bit about what people are talking about in terms of advocating on their behalf and will it be possible to maybe push a certain item uh, during this session? Uh, there's a lot of, you know, a, a lot of uh, special items that folks are worried about for their particular communities. Um, they're all concerned, uh, all concerned about what level of uh, services might be available, particularly uh, uh, Medicaid and um, education. Um, is that going to suffer? Uh, so those are common concerns I hear quite often. Uh, folks definitely want to balance the budget. Um, I hear uh, different concerns, obviously, uh, from my Republican constituents more often. Uh, you know, how do we contain the spending? Mm -hmm. From my Democratic constituents more often, how do we provide better services? Um, and what I try to take to both of them is, um, in my opinion, we can do both. Uh, I have a management background in the two years I've been in the legislature. I see lots and lots of areas. Uh, where there's not uh, purposeful waste or just sloppiness, we just have a, a whole layer of uh, government programs and concepts that have built up over time that are now oftentimes getting in the way of each other more than supporting each other. And if we have the patience to kind of work through all that stuff, streamline and, and align all the efforts, um, there's room to lower costs and provide more services. And speaking of that, a big job for you and many other lawmakers is dealing with the shortfall and setting next year's budget in light of the tough economic conditions around the country. Um, 
have you taken a look at the, the proposal from both the Finance Committee and the newly elected Governor uh, Susana Martinez, and what are your thoughts on those plans? Well, I've taken a brief look at both. Um, they're they're going to be subject to lots of debate over the, the course of the session. Uh, people tend to look at them as fait accompli, but no, these are just recommendations. Um, and what I've seen so far, is they're fairly high-level overviews. And in some of these areas, you really need to get more to the details to know what it's really all about. Right. Um, so they're both trying to balance the budget, um, which is great. We're going to have a lot of different opinions about how to do that when we get into the session, and uh, it's going to be interesting. Um, a lot of people may be sitting and, and watching and wondering, how do we get into this mess and how do we get out of it? What are your thoughts? Well, uh, you know, one of the things is, uh, um, like many states across the country, we kind of got caught into the revenue bubble. Uh, as much as any homeowner got caught into the mortgage bubble, uh, government got caught in the revenue bubble and kind of assumed that it would just keep on coming. And um, the slowing of the economy has cut the revenue. The other piece that's changed is when the economy slowed, uh, energy prices dropped, and of course we get a lot of our budget, uh, our revenues from the oil and gas industries. So particularly when gas prices fell, which is where we get most of our revenue from, uh, natural gas, uh, that took a big chunk out of our revenues. Um, the interesting thing is uh, there have been so many new reserves discovered around the country, we can't anticipate gas prices going up significantly in the future. At least it doesn't look that way now. It can always change. But um, So we kind of have to accept the fact that the amount of revenue we're going to get from oil and gas is not going to be what it was in the past. All right. Uh, in the governor's uh, proposed budget under public employees, the Martinez plan would extend temporary 1.5% additional pension contribution and require another 2% contribution as well. She says the additional 2% contribution would not apply to K through 12 teachers and instructional aides. Do you think uh, excluding K through 12 teachers and instructional aides is part of her plan to help improve education around the state? And why do you think improving our children's education is at the top of the list for the Martinez administration? Well, number one, I'm glad it's at the top of the list because that's where it belongs. More than any of the subsidies and these tax credits and economic trickery that we try to play that more often we, we trip over ourselves in really helping the situation when we do that stuff. Good, solid education, kids who are ready to join the workforce and be effective and are literate and you know, know how to show up and, and be reliable. Uh, that is just so critical to our future. And when employees, uh, employers uh, choose New Mexico it, or any state, quality of the workforce, uh, they recognize that's the number one thing that's going to impact their success. Mm -hmm. um, so that's exactly where we should be putting our efforts, and, and I'm thrilled that she's doing that. Um, uh, in terms of the um, not applying the same contribution requirements to teachers. First of all, PARA is a different plan than the ERA plan for the rest of the state employees. Um, well, I very strongly support teachers, uh, and I think we can do a lot to help them out. We've been getting in their way in recent years, in my opinion. Um, I think that we have to be very careful about singling out specific groups of state employees as being more deserving of protection than others. I think that creates a lot of potential problems. So I haven't made up my mind on this one yet. I don't know all the details. Um, but I'm sure there'll be a lot of discussion about that. And, and I have to say, if I worked in the environment department or uh, uh, in uh, public safety, in the Department of Transportation, I'd be going, well, gee, what I do is important too. How come they get special treatment? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a valid question to ask. So um, without making up my mind, I think this one is subject to um, some robust discussion. Do you think the majority of the session will be um, talking about uh, the, the budget more than any other topic? Or? Uh, the budget will be huge. Uh, uh, to me, what's important is 
the quality of the discussion. Mm -hmm. Too often discussions about budgets are, let's go down all these line items and cut this 3%, this 5%. And then, uh, we need to step back and take uh, a much more strategic view. And uh, as I said before, we've got uh, lots of competing, overlapping programs. Uh, we've got lots of separate silos and bureaucracies. This is a time where everybody needs to be stepping forward and going, gee, I overlap with this department this way, this. We need people who are agency heads, who are focused on protecting taxpayers, not on protecting their agency. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's human nature. That's just typically what happens in all bureaucracies, public or private. Uh, but if we're going to get past this budget issue on a long-term basis, everybody has to step up and say, hey, you know, here's how I can contribute to that. And uh, I'm not here to protect my department. I'm here to protect the public's interest. And Senator Fishman, that must be a difficult thing for any lawmaker uh, to deal with during the session is which item uh, goes here, you know, the priority. Yeah, it, it, it's huge and it's, uh, uh, I, I wish I could say that what happens is we all get together and agree uh, between the governor and the legislature and amongst legislators themselves that, oh, this is what we're gonna do. Uh, my experience in the first two years in the legislature is that it's not so much people agreeing to a unified program, but it's just kind of pushing the discussion to move more in a certain direction. And uh, so it tends to be incremental and gradual, uh, sometimes a lot more gradual and incremental than I'd prefer, uh, but that's democracy, so. How do you think uh, lawmakers are gonna handle the change uh, in the governor, the new governor? Uh, will there be like a resistance or? You know, I, I, I'm not going to speak for anybody else. I, I, I just know that wherever I can find common ground, um, uh, I'm going to work with this governor. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that we'll be able to find some common ground on some important issues in the budget, um, in education, uh, and that we'll have to do some great things there. Uh, I'm less confident that'll happen in areas like the environment environmental protection, uh, energy. Um, so those are some areas where we'll probably have some pretty consistent disagreements. Well, I'm not gonna run around beating people up over what we disagree about. I'm gonna focus on constructively accomplishing things where we do have agreement. And speaking of education, Education Week magazine recently released its annual report. And in it, New Mexico gets a C and a ranking of 32 nationally for the quality of public education. And the state received an F for achievement in kindergarten through 12th grade and a D plus in chance for success. Mm -hmm. On a high note, New Mexico received an A minus for standards, assessment, and accountability. What are your thoughts on that and what needs to happen to improve education around the state? Uh, Education is a huge issue for me. It's probably the number one uh, on my list of priorities about where I hope to have an impact. Um, looking at the big picture, if I look at our public schools, K through 12, um, we all run around, uh, a lot of rhetoric saying they're failures, they're failures, they're failures. Um, if you look a little closer at the picture, um, what we see happening is that the schools work okay for kids who come from families who care about education and provide the kind of family and social support that kids need to succeed. And our schools, frankly, are designed to handle kids who come from those kinds of backgrounds. Where they fail is for the many children coming out of poverty in New Mexico in particular um, who don't have all those social supports. Maybe their parents are young, maybe they're working two or three jobs, or, um, but for whatever reason, they don't get the same exposure and support at home and the same enrichment opportunities. And I can, uh, and any educator out there can tell you that those kids are the ones that are gonna be dropping out and that are gonna fail. We know that up front. Um, yet in education, it's kind of interesting. Um, well, we know that these kind of home and community factors are correlated 60% with the kid's success in school. The, the school itself is only 40% correlation, so it's bigger than the school itself. 
And any educator you talk to will just tell you off the top of their head that viscerally they know that, they feel that. We keep um, designing programs for schools that we think are going to fix this. And I think that what we've inadvertently done is um, by doing that, we've inadvertently consigned this group of kids to failure. Mm -hmm. Not purposeful, no one's trying to hurt anybody, but uh, you've heard, probably heard the, the phrase disposable kids or throwaway kids. The fact is those 50% of the kids are not getting what they need out of our schools and we all pay. We pay when, they, when we pay their time in prison, if they happen to go that route, if they're on unemployment or public assistance, and all the other things that happen. Um, so I, I think the key thing is we need to start refocusing our policy on how we address um, that support system that starts in the community in the home. Personally, I'm working with some folks starting a local reading foundation that starts right at birth to give opportunities to these kids for enrichment, to hear words, to hear language, to be read to, to understand what a book is. Um, I think that's very critical, and I think from a public policy standpoint, we need to put a lot of focus on how we can do better there. Absolutely. We want to take a moment uh, to remind our listeners on KRWG 90.7 FM Las Cruces that you're listening to your legislators. I'm Carlos Craig with Democrat State Senator Stephen Fishman, who represents District 37 here in southern New Mexico. Uh, Senator, you told a local newspaper recently that your goal for the upcoming year is to tie together economic development, education, and job training, and you think those issues can be linked to renewable en the renewable energy industry and the spaceport. Can you talk a little bit about that vision? Yeah, well, I think uh, um, we've got a lot of things going on here that we don't necessarily leverage as well as we can for everybody's benefit. Um, so uh, in education, I, you know, I just kind of told you how important I think it is for prospective employers. Um, I'll talk first about the spaceport, which I was a complete skeptic about uh, when I first heard about it. I moved here only six years ago. I haven't lived in New Mexico that long. Um, but over time, as I've seen more and gotten a better understanding of what's going on there, I do believe the spaceport um, has some real um, opportunities for this community. And it's much bigger than just Virgin Galactic and space tourism. Uh, the big advantage comes when we can give fast turnaround launches to scientific research and commercial ventures. Mm -hmm. And uh, oftentimes it takes more than a year or a year and a half to get a launch permit elsewhere in the country. Well, here we can maybe do it in three or four months. Um, time is money and that's huge for these scientific and commercial enterprises. Um, and that nimbleness is, is crucial. Um, it also gives a great opportunity to build jobs. So we have a, a, an aerospace department here at NMSU, which I dearly would like to actually fund a little better than we do right now. Um, but it has um, surged in prop, uh, popularity due to the spaceport. Uh, and us getting the launches uh, going at the spaceport uh, can have a lot to do with creating the kinds of good jobs that keep an educated workforce here in Doniana County, Las Cruces, Sierra County, rather than having them all have to move to Houston or Denver or somewhere else, which is always the lament we hear, our, you know, our most skilled people go elsewhere to find jobs that, that suit their talents. Uh, well, this is a great way to start building some jobs that suit our talents and um, I think create for a lot of the community a sense that um, we can be vibrant and we can be advanced and we can be as cutting edge as anybody else uh, out here in Las Cruces. And, uh, it, and I think that's just a, a really important thing. Flights from Spaceport America are expected to begin sometime this year next, but that could change. Recently, Governor Martinez demanded for the resignation of Spaceport Director Rick Homans. In fact, the governor sought the resignation of all the former uh, Governor Bill Richardson's political appointees. And, and something Homans said in a statement is, Quote, if Martinez does not support the spaceport project, it could slow down things or fall apart quickly. Um, Martinez said in a statement, state government can continue to be a partner in the spaceport project, although no longer in a major financier. What are your thoughts on that? 
Uh, well, I think the bargain always was that I think the total um, taxpayer investment was scheduled to be something like $225 million uh, when it was all in. And the basic idea is that um, the state government would own and operate the facility much like uh, a, a municipality might operate an airport, mm -hmm. which is to say they own the facility, but then they lease it to um, folks who decide to use it for launches uh, such as Virgin Galactic uh, or, or the company up in Colorado whose name I'm, I'm forgetting right now. But, um, and that in that way it would essentially generate uh, its own revenue and be self-sufficient. Um, so that's always been the goal. Um, so the governor's statement is really nothing new to me in terms of what the intention for the spaceport is. Uh, I suspect she might be a little stricter than our prior governor. Uh, if the spaceport were to say, oops, we're running behind a little, we need a little, uh, on our finances, we need a little help from the state, uh, she might be less uh, inclined to give that extra help than perhaps Governor Richardson was. Um, regarding um, uh, Mr. Homans, who um, I found to be a uh, a passionate and effective advocate for the spaceport and, and future business there. Uh, personally, I'm going to miss him. I just hope we, uh, you know, every governor deserves to have their own their own team. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, you know, I can't criticize her for wanting to have her own team. I just hope we find someone as enthusiastic and as dedicated and as effective as as Rick Holmans was. Do you think that the space, Spaceport America project has been sort of a burden to the state? Well, startup always is uh, in, in any endeavor, whether it's uh, government or business. Um, and uh, what we have to say to ourselves is, what's the long-term future? Um, government is a long-term enterprise. Um, so I hate to see people making quarterly decisions like we were uh, you know, a private corporation. Um, no, I'm hoping our government's here for the next 100, 200 years. So let's be sure we're looking at, um, uh, you know, at the long-term payback and uh, that we don't cut our nose off to spite our face. Uh, your opinion on what needs to happen to keep the project moving forward? Uh, well, first of all, it's been moving forward wonderfully. Mm -hmm. um, so to me, the question is not a matter of us having to jumpstart it. To me, the issue is not getting in the way of the incredible progress that's been made, particularly the last two years. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think a little bit of the attitude has to be get someone effective to run the spaceport, have a clear, keep our clear focus on what we're trying to achieve here, and commercials, just uh, I mean the, uh, the space passengers, the tourism, is just the door opener. That's not the goal. Um, and if we keep our eye on that, um, we can be successful. But we have to, once we get that, you know, that team in place to carry forward, let's get out of their way and, you know, let them be imaginative and let them make it a success. In, in anything, uh, rather in any uh, political campaign, uh, when you were running uh, this time around, or last time around, did you pick something up as far as um, what you learn? Because I'm sure that in every campaign people learn different things. Yeah. But as you're going into your session... Well, uh, you know, people are concerned about uh, jobs and economic welfare, and a lot of time you'll hear it from constituents who are on the verge of losing unemployment benefits or, uh, you know, facing a personal economic crisis. Um, first of all, we have to have the services in place. Um, I have to be honest with you, there's a lot of services that I see in government where uh, we don't ask the recipient to put any skin in the game. Mm -hmm. And as a result, the services are not... Uh, as appreciated as, as they probably should be. Um, so I think we need to, one of the things we can do as we go back is whenever we're giving someone a benefit, um, what is it that we can be asking in return that'll you know, help the rest of the public? We're helping them, so you know, give a little back. And um, so I think we need to be looking for those opportunities in an awful lot of the services we provide. Uh, and, and certainly I'll be at, not, not to be burdensome, but just to get a sense of appreciation in the sense of, no, the community doesn't owe you this. Uh, the community is helping you with this, and we want you to be part of the community and help the community back in return. 
So I think we need to build that, that whole sense of the cycle. And I have to say, uh, many of my Republican colleagues, uh, when they complain about that, I, I think it's legitimate. Um, and uh, as a Democrat, um, you know, I think we have to look at that and just say, hey, you know, we all, uh, we're a community. Hillary Clinton said it takes a village. Well, a village doesn't mean we pick who we're going to give stuff to and they take it. Community means everybody's contributing and we all feel that sense of responsibility to each other. Senator Fishman, any final thoughts as you prepare to head back to work in Santa Fe? Well, I, I, uh, we, we skipped over the renewable energy thing pretty quickly there. I just want to point out that I, uh, I am a big advocate of energy conservation uh, and of renewable energy, but uh, particularly energy conservation because it costs a ton of money to add new power generating capacity. We all save money when we uh, implement technologies or plans that help us reduce energy usage, that's good for our economy because when energy is cheap, it's easier to attract manufacturing companies. It's easier. Um, so that's, that's very critical. The other thing about these kinds of jobs, why I think they're important, is they're not exportable. This is not a job that you can ship to China or it, it deals with infrastructure and buildings and power lines that are here. So it's jobs for our community. So I think that's why it's a really important part of the mix in growing our economy. Wonderful. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Senator Fishman, for being here on the program. Thank you for having me again. And I'm Carlos Correa. Remember that you can uh, follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. And for the latest headlines, you can head over to our website at krwg.org. We'll see you next time. Your Legislators is a production of KRWG Broadcasting. Copyright New Mexico State University Board of Regents.